This episode is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. When was the last time you reviewed your insurance policy? So it's been a while, huh? Well, no worries. My friends at the Austin Brummett Agency would love to hear from you and provide you with some amazing rates. Give them a call at 678-402-8262 or email them at abrummett at farmersagent.com. That's A-B-R-U-M-I-T at farmersagent.com and tell them Harley sent you. Insiders, Inside the Bubble with Harley G is now sponsored by BetterHelp. As a partner of this episode, listeners can access the BetterHelp link located in the show notes to receive 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist who will listen and help. Go to BetterHelp, that is betterhelp.com slash inside the bubble, the link to get started. You're listening to Inside the Bubble with Harley G, the podcast for the superwoman. Every week, we connect with amazing individuals who share their inspirational experiences and stories while motivating an inspiring purpose. It's time to hang your cape. Grab your coffee, your water, your cocktail, and come on in Inside the Bubble with me, your host, Harley G. Insiders, welcome to Inside the Bubble with Harley G. Today, I have Colleen Carey, not related to Jim Carey. No, he's got two no. R's. I've got one R. Okay, perfect. Look at that. <laughs> um, but I have Mar- Colleen- Mariah Carey, maybe. I don't know. Oh, that right there. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we need to look into that family tree history for sure. <laughs> but um, I have Colleen Carey today and Colleen, you're in for a treat today. Colleen is a skincare expert. So she actually launched her own skincare line. Um, And so I'm going to let Colleen speak a little bit about her history and how she came um, on this journey of skincare. But um, I'm really excited to hear your story, Colleen, and of course, how that plays into purpose. So tell us a little bit about you. Well, thank you for having me, Carly. Um, I've loved chatting with you already since we got a little a little visit before we started. Yes. <laughs> so I think I've lived many different lives in this life. Okay. I've had a lot of different <laughs> chapters, shall we say. Yeah. So um, I grew up in the Midwest, mm-hmm. went to college in the Midwest, and got a business degree. And then I decided I wanted to, in college, I would freelance as a makeup artist for friends doing photography. And I really liked that world. So um, I got my license as an esthetician. So I started working in skincare and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I kind of veered away from makeup artistry and focused more on skin. And rather than, you know, the side of aesthetics or you know doing facials that's more about massage and relaxation i really enjoyed learning about the ingredients and formulations and how to improve your skin um then after years of doing that uh you know my parents were like it's time to get a real job okay (laughs) so so i went and worked in marketing for you know the next decade Mm -hmm. that was an absolute blast i really learned how to you know sell yourself how to present yourself brand yourself you know i was working for other companies i worked at an agency so i was representing other brands but it just taught me a lot about you know if you have a business how do you sell it? How do you present it? How do you get the word out about it? Um, And then my next chapter, I got married. I had a family. I have two amazing, amazing children who are my world. Um, And so spent, you know, more or less a decade being a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. Well, they're in middle school now. And 
you know, becoming their own people and very busy with their own social lives and very busy with activities and, you know, schoolwork. And although they need me more in a different way than when, you know, they're toddlers and they're little, they're at school all day. And then after school, they can be gone a lot. And so it just really freed up this whole part of my life. Mm-hmm. And I kind of started thinking, what's next? Mm-hmm. You know, when your kids are away at school for eight hours during the daytime, it gives you a lot of time. And I'm mm-hmm. not somebody that can just go shopping and work out mm-hmm. and read books that whole time. I need something more. I need something more stimulating. And my old friends that know me know I've always wanted to launch a skincare company. And I've always kind of kept up throughout the years, you know, trying different things. I mean, I'll try anything, any treatment, any product, any ingredient, any peel, any, any needle in the face, you know, <laughs> done it all. Uh, and so I finally said, I, this was about a year and a half ago, you know, okay, I think it's my time. So mm-hmm. I spent, you know, a good portion of a year researching just what would I create? I had always mm-hmm. thought, you know, I'll create something that's for me and my girlfriends. I'm in my early forties. Um, but what I came to realize is, you know, the beauty industry and skincare, that market is so saturated. Mm -hmm. So I thought, um, you know, and I don't want to create a product that I'm forcing my friends to buy. Right. We all have Mm -hmm. those friends that start a product and you have to buy it. And I didn't want to put that pressure. I thought that's, Mm -hmm. that's not what I'm trying to do. And, you know, we're all online and I'm on Instagram and I'm seeing this whole younger generation um, of young people in their twenties, in their late teens, in their twenties, even early thirties, different generation than us. And um, they really care about their skin in a way that we didn't when we Mm -hmm. were in our twenties. Okay. We Mm -hmm. didn't have, of a 12 step, you know, nightly routine. We were going no. out with our friends. We were falling asleep with our makeup on, you know? Yes. Yes. Doing, we weren't doing anything preventative. We weren't noticing, you know, aging or spots or anything and saying, I want to, you know, prevent this now. Mm-hmm. So now we, you know, because we were just out and, and the, and the the access to ingredients and products was so much more limited. You know, we had to go to the grocery store and Mm -hmm. get say knives, that really rough scrub Mm -hmm. ways to just, you know, alcohol astringent, just fry. (laughs) You know, so it was really limited what we could do. And this younger generation, they're so much more educated and they want to take care of their skin. So they're preventative where we are now corrective. We have to Mm -hmm. correct all the sun damage and, you know, just the environmental damage that we were exposed to. And we didn't work on then. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really credit this younger generation. And then I also noticed, you know, they, a lot of times us, our mothers, you know, our parents, they prefer going into a store. They prefer yeah. going in to buy something. I, I think about the like the Merle Normans of the world, right? Like you don't see anymore, but that was actually a skincare store that you yes, went into, our, our parents went into to do their skincare. Like that is, I'm like, wow, you took me back. <laughs> right there. And even now with all the opportunity, yeah. uh, some you know, of the more mature generations, they still prefer to go into the doctor's office, the dermatologist Mm -hmm. and pick Mm -hmm. up a product, go into, you know, the department store and get their Clinique or Chanel or whatever, you know, product they want. But the younger generation click, that's how we shop. All that access. Mm -hmm. And so then I realized that's my target demographic. So I found a, so I really care about the quality of ingredients Mm -hmm. that we're putting on our face. So what was important to me creating a skincare line was that it was a really high quality product. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not into clean beauty. I think it's ineffective. I think it's fun. It's cute. It's a lot of marketing, you know, Mm -hmm. to have a papaya oatmeal mask. Mm -hmm. That's a fun thing to do, you know, for a girl's night in or, Mm -hmm. you know, self-care night. It smells good, but is it actually doing anything effective to your skin? Not really. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wanted to do something with active ingredients, with medical grade skincare. 
So I found a manufacturer um, and partnered with a dermatologist to create a skincare line that has that is medical grade, which means it has the highest concentration of active ingredients on the market. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really high quality product. And then what I realized is when you get into the markup of the product, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people mark products up too high. Mm -hmm. I'm not a plastic surgeon's office that has a huge overhead for a beautiful office and a full staff of beautiful people. And I need to buy a Range Rover for myself, you know, <laughs> and a Porsche KM for my wife. So yeah. I don't have the overhead and I don't have to mark the product up. Right. High. So what yeah. I realize is I can make the same quality product, but because my overhead is my computer yeah. and everything's online, click, click. Mm -hmm. So my whole business is e-commerce. I'm so I'm selling to a younger demographic all online. So my prices are lower. Mm -hmm. And I just so my whole platform is that I can give that same quality product at a fair price. Yeah. Because a lot of these younger people not only are they they invested in their skincare, but they are going to the plastic surgeon's office, the Medi Spa, and they're getting injections. They're getting mm -hmm. getting filler, mm -hmm. which is thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But they're you know just starting out in their careers. You know their salary isn't the same as you know a forty or fifty year old salary. So then when they get up to the counter and you know these fancy places say hey would you like this serum or this moisturizer for 140 dollars?" they're going i can't really afford that right so then i'm offering the same quality product for 60 dollars hmm. okay. okay reading the ingredients reading the concentration reading you know this is the same size product this is 1.7 mm -hmm. ounces mine's 1.7 ounces mm -hmm. so i like to say that my my new brand skin rx is a entry level medical mm. grade skincare for people that may have been using clean beauty or maybe they've been using um over the counter nice products l'oreal you know CeraVe, things that you buy at the drugstore and they're ready for a more serious skincare line but can't really jump to those say you know uh really expensive medical grade skincare lines, but they still want the results. Okay. So that's what created in skin RX. Wow. Okay. So that we have the, I know. So now we have the, how you created the skin RX. You know, I think it's really important to, well, first I want to ask you, what is your definition of purpose? Oof, you should have prepared me for that one. <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's, of course, it's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's what you care about. It's your legacy. It's mm -hmm. what, what image you want to give to the world, how you want people to see you. And it's also what's gonna, when you put your head down on the pillow at night, Mm -hmm. and you're proud of yourself mm -hmm. and you are doing, you're on the track that you want to be, that mm -hmm. you are doing and living the life that you're proud of, yeah. that you stand behind. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really challenging because everybody views purpose and lifestyle and the right way to live everybody's mm -hmm. in the box and judging everybody else and it's hard to stand behind your purpose because you're going to have people that disagree oh, and say why yeah. are you doing that you shouldn't be doing that right why would you let your kids do that they shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing that they should be mm -hmm. doing this mm -hmm. but everybody's purpose is going to be different but if you can mm -hmm. go to bed at night and put your head on your pillow and feel good about what you did that day Mm -hmm. As a person, professionally, for your family, for your friends. You know, my dad always says, my dad's um, a really big inspiration to me. We're very close. And he's like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're laying there in your final breaths in, in your bed, wherever you are, 
It's not the stuff that you can take with you. The stuff's not going to be there. By your right, right, right. And so what's going to be there? Ladies, I know there's so much to do and not enough time in the day. Trust me, I'm right there with you. But what are you doing for yourself? Well, I've recently discovered Body Bar Pilates. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Body Bar Pilates will challenge all of your major muscle groups and provide you with a full body workout. Wow, listen, I had to check it out. I took a class with Sherelle and it was amazing. They have workouts for all skill levels, whether you're just starting out or you're just looking for a new way to move your body. This is the community for you. Check out my friends at Body Bar Pilates East Cobb or give them a call at 678-941-4371. And don't forget to mention me, Harley G. At the end of the day, that's what really matters. Who is going to be there? And that's what's really most important. Yes. So I don't know if that made sense. No, it totally makes sense. I absolutely agree. You mentioned legacy in there. You mentioned who's going to be there. You mentioned, you know, being able to go to sleep at night and say, okay, um, you know, what am I proud of? What are my accomplishments? What have I contributed? Right. Um, And so you mentioned all those things, which I I think are key components of purpose. And um, so you have only been doing this for a year and a half. That is mind blowing uh, to see that you've been able to do that. And I feel like such a short amount of time. Um, Was there at any point before you were getting about to start that you had doubts? had fears, challenges, what are those, what is that process like going into it? Girl, two <laughs> nights ago, it was two nights ago that I was still doubting myself. Yep. So yep. I think everybody mm-hmm. needs to know, like, we are all going to have those sleepless nights. Yep. I did not sleep maybe an hour, two nights ago, doubting yep why am I doing this? Am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right path Mm -hmm. regarding this company? Not, Mm -hmm. you know, other parts of my life. And I was up all night. So I think Mm -hmm. we're constantly in life Mm going to have those moments, Mm -hmm. you know, and my kids are starting to have those moments. So I'm trying to help them process that, that, you know, life will never be perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are always going to have good days and bad days, highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And just understanding um, I think Tom Hanks, I just saw something where he was talking about that recently, mm-hmm. that no matter what, you're going to have really great moments and they're going to feel Absolutely. great. But, but remember, that's not going to last. Yes. And then you're going to have really low days and really low moments. But remember, that's not going to last either. Exactly. So exactly. I think it's just trying to process um, when you have those tough moments, keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep going. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, right now, I think, you know, my personal life is pretty good. Um, my children are thriving. So I'm not having a lot of those problems. But so right now, you know, starting a new company, I'm having a lot of those moments. Am I doing mm-hmm. the right thing? Mm-hmm. Is it moving in the right direction? Is it moving quick enough? I do have a lot of those regularly. Mm-hmm. I can say that honestly, because it's just true. And it doesn't mean I'm doing something wrong because no. everybody, every billionaire, every small business owner, every stay at home mom, every, you know, professional or, you know, is going to have tough moments professionally mm-hmm. going, am I mm-hmm. doing the right thing? Yeah. Am I at the right company? Did mm-hmm. I say the right thing in that meeting? Yes. And that's just, that's just part of it. Of it. that's yeah. my that's fine. You know, I, I have had some really tough times personally and, um, going through divorce and that Mm -hmm. was really tough. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of Mm self-doubt and I just, I tell other people that are going through that. I said, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And eventually you'll wake up one day Mm -hmm. and you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's one thing that I also wanted to talk about is you being a single 
mom in managing, you know, uh, uh, kids in a household in a business. Like how, when do you find the balance to do all of that? Because that's one of the, that's one of our things. We're super right. We manage to take on all the problems. Uh, we manage to get the kids to all the practices. We manage to get them fed. They're still alive. They're going to school, <laughs> run a business. I mean, like, we're literally superwomen. And so how do you find the balance? And please tell me, I call them Charlotte moments because, um. so I watched Sex and the City, the movie, and I love the scene where Charlotte, like, completely loses it. And then she goes in the pantry and she closes the door. So have you had Charlotte moments <laughs> in your life as you are trying to balance it all? What does that look like for you? I, so first of all, I want to say I have amazing parents mm -hmm. help me. They live locally mm -hmm. uh, and are just the most amazing grandparents. Mm -hmm. They're always there for me and my kids. So that I feel so fortunate when I need someone to help with rides, you know, um, my kids are with me pretty much a hundred percent. Um, mm -hmm. they're very, you know, I shouldn't, um, they'll be gone maybe one night a week, mm -hmm. maybe one weekend a month or so. Um, mm -hmm. and it's my joy. It's my joy to pick up the slack where, you know, somebody else isn't stepping in and that's fine. So mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of support. Um, in that regard, um, mm -hmm. but I have parents and then I live in an amazing community mm -hmm. um, that's very tight knit. So I feel like I have so many moms and dads, yes, neighbors yes. that know my kids, that love my kids, mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. that if they need a ride, they step in. Yep. It's, it's, I feel very grateful for yes. the support that I do have. However, um, when I need to take care of myself, mm -hmm. I'm a sleeper. Oh. I am a sleeper. <laughs> I swear by it. I mean, there are sleeping days. Sleeping is self-care, by the way. I just want to tell you that sleeping is self-care. <laughs> you know, when people ask, like, how do I look the way I do? And I'm like, well, it could be the needles and the peels and the skincare and all this and the water. I'm mm -hmm. like, I think it's sleep. I think yeah. it's sleep. Cause I just will sleep as much as I can. And that mm -hmm. to me is so, you know, it's just your brain checks out. You're in dreamland. Yes. Your body is fully at rest. Resting. I yes. feel like that's what rejuvenates me because we have to be so on the go, ready to go. So if right. I'm rested, I can then go, okay, here we go. Full-time mom working, you know, my son's over here at mm -hmm. his own practice right now. My daughter, I'm going to go drive her after this, pick up her friends. And I pick up my son, do some work in between, you know, call with you, call with, you know, one of my teammates later today. Mm -hmm. So to do that, I swear by rest. That is my pantry cry moment. <laughs> it's just naps and sleep. Last night, I went to bed at 10 and... Mm -hmm. That's good for me. Yeah. So, no, you know, I, and it's I summertime, so I slept till eight. So I was like, oh. it sounds like a sweet piece of chocolate. And I did not move. I did not move. <laughs> now, believe me, there was some melatonin involved. <laughs> yeah. So that's okay. my way to, you know, stay strong. So sleep, your self care. It also sounds like you have an amazing community that's able to back you up and help you and support you, including your parents, your neighbors. I completely understand um, between having four kids and being pulled on different activities, I heavily rely on my community to help me out. If it's another mom that's in the same sports as one of my kids and then we'll, we'll coordinate yeah carpools and who's picking up who who's dropping off who can you yes. be over there um yes. it's 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 the it's the only way I can survive um or balance you know all of these things um you also mentioned having a very close relationship with your father um 
What did that look like when you were deciding to come on this journey, starting to scare Caroline? How how were you able to lean on relationships just like your father or your parents? How were you able to lean on those relationships, or those loved ones, those individuals close to you to say, you know what, I can do this? It's all because of my dad. I mean, it mm-hmm. really is. And my therapist. And my therapist. Who listen? <laughs> yes. Yes, she's yes, yes. One, she's the one, my th- my beloved therapist. Uh-huh. Um, she's the one that said, go for it. You can do oh. this. But it's right. my dad that helped me figure it out because he's an on- entrepreneur. Okay. He, I think, is the reason that I've had so many different chapters because that's mm-hmm. what he does. And mm-hmm. he makes it seem so fun. Um, mm-hmm. He's run a real estate brokerage. He's a real estate developer. Um, and now he decided about three years ago that he was going to start a bourbon company. So he bought this old bourbon company from southern ohio you know which is right on the border of kentucky Mm -hmm. and it was like pre-prohibition and they had gone Mm -hmm. out of business and he Mm -hmm. the brand and and everything and revitalized it and it's been three years and they're you know all over the country and even in canada and he just did it he was like i'm gonna do it so i'm gonna do it he makes it look fun so Mm -hmm. i will say because he and i have always been in service-based businesses Mm -hmm. started you know a not retail but like like a product selling Mm -hmm. a product, Mm -hmm. which he'd never done. And so that was really what, you know, he was so the perfect person to lean on because Mm -hmm. I love him so much. And, you know, he wants to help me and support me. And so to then say, okay, so how did you figure out a product and selling a product rather than a service? Um, So he's been hugely important to figure out Here's what you need. Here's the process. And his process, even though his is bourbon and mine is skincare, he was saying it's all the same, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just the way of getting a product, building a product, creating it, packaging it, branding it, marketing mm-hmm. it. So um, that's been a lot of fun because I can still, you know, so all along my career, we've always spent time together. We go to lunch a lot. We go to dinner a lot. And so I can just kind of th- bounce things off of him. And he's always supportive and positive. And his philosophy, I mean, I know it's not his uniquely, but <laughs> his, what he has always told me is just do it. And I know it's Nike's, but how he says it is different. He goes, just mm-hmm. do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Just go for it. Mm-hmm. And he has made it fun. Like this skincare company has been so fun. It's a passion project. I'm excited about it. The little Mm -hmm. wins are just such a joy when I get Mm -hmm. a new sale or a repeat customer or I'm in a new state, you know, there's so much joy or I get Mm -hmm. new followers or I get, you know, new content or, you know, a new person sending me a video of them using the product or a review saying like, oh my gosh, this really is great stuff. Yeah. So he has really motivated me and been, you know, Again, another in another part of my life, they help with me personally, with my children, with my family, mm-hmm. with my home, mm-hmm. um, and professionally. So it sounds like not only has he been able to inspire and motivate you, but he's also a, t- a mentor type. Oh, thing, yes. Right? Oh, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. So yes. somebody you're able to kind of be like, hey, you, you've done this before, you know, Um one question that I did want to ask is failures. Um, and, you know, I see things online that says, you know, failure is not an option, blah, blah, blah. But I okay. uh don't agree with that because no. I really feel like failure is part of the process. If you're not failing, then that means you're not trying new things. If you're not failing, that means okay. in, in, in failure, I feel like it's almost kind of like each time your passion is reborn because you have to be able to dust yourself up and pick yourself up back up and, and, and figure it out. Right. So there's so much to be learned in failing. And I do believe it's part of the process. I do believe it's part of it. Like it is an option. It is totally an option. What are some 
failures that you have encountered that you feel like, you know, had it not been for this, I wouldn't be where I am today. A hundred million bazillion <laughs> percent. A hundred million bazillion percent. Mm-hmm. First of all, that is the biggest cliche ever. Failure is not an option. Are you perfect? Are you right. perfect? Who has done anything in their life and it has just gone immediate, like just exactly as planned? Everything. Perfect. Right. Never. Absolutely. Nobody on the planet in any endeavor, you know, whether it's trying to draw a picture mm-hmm. or make the team or build a business or start mm-hmm. a family or have a marriage. When has it ever been linear and, you know, just constantly? It's just, that's ridiculous. Right. Um, but I'm very much somebody, and I've talked with my team, my SkinRx team, a lot about this is, you know, this whole first year has been trial and error. And I think mm-hmm. that's what's given me grace through those mm-hmm. mistakes is to just say, okay, that didn't work. Let's regroup and, mm-hmm. you know, switch gears and try a different direction. Mm-hmm. And I really feel like that's been a theme with my kids lately too. Mm-hmm. I'm not one that tends to look back and dwell on the past. I'm very much, okay, how do we move forward? Mm-hmm. 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 And my daughter, she's just in this phase where, you know, something she's going through, she goes, but that happened, but that happened, but that happened. I'm like, I, I, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it, talked about it. Now let's figure out how do you move forward? Mm -hmm. How do you move into something else? Like don't follow the past. Yeah. Well, I think the important thing is like, acknowledge it, accept it, give Mm -hmm. yourself grace. Like I said, like "Eh, that didn't work out. I lost a little money on that, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I had an agency I first worked with um, on building my brand and they just weren't the the quality that I wanted, the direction I wanted, the uh, rapport that I wanted. Um, And I spent a lot of money working with them and just felt like I was constantly saying, that's not working for me. That's not working for me. This is what I want. This is what I want. And was getting pushed back or they just weren't hearing. And so after several months, you know, I realized I needed to find a new agency to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, And so part of me was like, gosh, I lost so much money, you know, Mm -hmm. relying on this company that didn't deliver what I had hoped for. Did I not communicate it right? Was I not tough enough? You know, did I not express what I needed enough? I hate to waste money. I hate Mm -hmm. to waste money. So that was really tough to swallow to be like, spent all that money and got like mediocre results. Results, right, right, right. But it was, I, I can't dwell on it and mm-hmm. keep it yeah. myself like, oh, all that money, you know, instead it's okay, regroup, find somebody else, mm-hmm. uh, this new agency who I love mm-hmm. and, you know, was able to then share the problems that I had. Mm-hmm you know, okay, so here's what I'm looking for. So it it gave me knowledge to then moving forward. This is important for me. Can you align with with my goals and with my brand and my my aesthetic? These Mm -hmm. are the things that are important to me. Can we, you know, is this working? And so now I'm having a lot more success communicating and working with a brand that really gets it. Mm -hmm. It's through the failures and through that, that you learn, like you said, Mm -hmm. And now I can articulate it where I didn't have that knowledge when I very first started Mm -hmm. with the first agency. Right. So that was definitely a failure. That was that lesson. Yeah. And and I love it because like sometimes I always say my my tag, my tagline is there's purpose in your story. And sometimes I realized that, well, I've realized that sometimes you don't necessarily know the purpose right away. Like, why did I go through that? What was the lesson no. we learned from that? No. You don't. And sometimes, and you may not never know. You may never know, right? But I actually, I have faith to know that while maybe the purpose was not revealed to me and I may never know the purpose, but I do truly believe that there is a purpose in that lesson, whether I become to know it down the line somewhere in the future or whether I immediately, sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm, that was the reason for that. <laughs> um, but I do believe that there is a purpose in every experience, every story, every situation that we go through. There is a purpose in that. Um, and I think it's those lessons learned. Sometimes we're able to reflect on them. 
sometimes not, but I think it's accumulation of all those lessons is a re or a reasons why we are on the path and the journey of purpose that we are. Um, and I also wanted to ask you, when it comes to purpose, where do you feel like you are in your journey? Because a lot of listeners are listening to this and they're thinking, hmm, I don't know how to figure it out. I don't, I'm not even on the, I'm not even on the path right now. I'm just trying to figure life out. There are some listeners that are on there. They're like, I'm beginning to figure it out here. I, I think I know which direction I want to go to. There are some that are like, I'm walking in my purpose. I know it. I've had the beautiful opportunity to realize it. So people are at very different, many stages of their purpose journey, right? But as you are on that journey, where do you think you are in that journey of purpose? I feel like at 43 years old, I am finally <laughs> just accepting I've found my purpose. I'm walking yeah. on the right path. And mm -hmm. I've had a lot of reflection. I have a birthday coming up and it's making me reflect a lot. And um, what I've thought about, because I screwed up a lot growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Made a lot of mistakes as a young person. Was we all did. This, you know, yeah. Was crazy, you know, was what not crazy, but wild, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. did a lot of things. I look back now, I'm like, oh my gosh, well, like how what was I thinking? Or like was I not <laughs> careful, you know? <laughs> so so many things as a young person. But then I think about I think every single mistake, every single setback, every problem, it led me to the place where I have my two kids. I know that was kind of a jump, but it's just like, no, I love my kids so mm -hmm. much. And lately, so as I'm reflecting with my birthday coming up, I'm getting super sentimental every year around my birthday. And I'm like, if I didn't take every step that I took and go through every mistake or challenge or whatever, it may not have led me to the exact children I have, and I would never want mm -hmm. any other children, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So even going through a divorce, mm -hmm. you know, but that was still, and you think back like, Oh, what I've been in that marriage, you know, what I know now, Mm -hmm. Every single choice that I made led me to have the children that I have. So for mm -hmm. that, I embrace everything that happened in my past yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they are, I can't imagine my life with anybody else. Mm -hmm. So that is wonderful. Yeah. And so as I've gone through, you know, different personal setbacks and changes, it's led me to where I am now mm -hmm. and, you know, then trying out different relationships and just trying to figure out my own personal life. Mm -hmm. And now having this business, which is so fulfilling to me personally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've built this beautiful home that I'm proud of. That's our forever home mm -hmm. and we're happy and we're settled and we love our community and my kids are doing great. I feel good. I'm in a really good place. Um, I have this wonderful business that is on the right track. It's still mm -hmm. so early in yeah. the state. But I do. I feel like I'm finally there. So again, I just encourage people that are like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep trying out new things and just every day, put one foot in front of the other. Just keep on trying, keep on moving forward, mm -hmm. whatever path that is, because it will somehow, some way come together. And we mm -hmm. all go through periods in life that feel chaotic, whether it's mm -hmm. through loss or change, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's under you're at your control or not, mm -hmm. just keep moving forward. Yeah. And eventually, whether it's a moment and then things change again, but eventually you'll feel like I'm okay. I'm yeah. Doing okay. I like yeah. me. I like yeah. my life. You yeah. know, I'm proud of my choices I, or I'm at peace with my past. Yes. Yeah. Or I'm excited exactly. about the future. Exactly. Oh, that is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Especially, um, you know, the piece about 
you want those the, the children that you have those are the two children that you you know like like I'm proud of these two children I wouldn't want to have any other children I love it I love it um so even uh, all my idiot moments throughout yeah. my whole life I wouldn't change a single one if it meant that I didn't have these two exactly yeah exact children yeah I love it I love it um it, this is so amazing I um want to ask you one more question so if you could give advice you, you you mentioned you know just keep going take one more steps but if you could give advice or give a nudge to someone that is maybe doubting their purpose they're maybe like oh is this really what i'm truly meant to be doing am i really going to do this if you could give them advice based on your experience or what you've been going what you have gone through what would you tell them Trust your gut, trust yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, no one else can make that decision for you. Mm -hmm. And there's what path you're on. It might be the right one. It might not, but yeah. it's up to you mm -hmm. and not your parents, not mm -hmm. your spouse, oh. not your boss, not your coworkers. Yeah. It's up to you. And I think we all have so much self-doubt and worry about what other people think yeah. and worry about disappointing other people. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard because at the end of the day, you have to live your truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm struggling with that. I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you're having those doubts, just keep trusting yourself, mm -hmm. even if you're going to mess up, mm -hmm. even if you keep going in, in this direction and then mm -hmm. it takes you three years to realize that was wrong and that was a mess and that made my life terrible. And now I've got to restart. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep trusting yourself and that you know what's best. And and that's why like that self-care and that that's, you know, time with yourself is so important. Mm -hmm. You need to not be constantly stimulated by other people and conversations and what yeah. the media tells us to do. Absolutely not. Don't listen to the media. Right. Right. Don't even listen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, don't listen to anybody. <laughs> don't listen to anybody. Like really take the time to think about what's best for you. Yeah. I think a lot of our unhappiness is worrying about my parents. Oh, really yeah. want yes. You know, my husband's really pushing me in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, my friends are all doing this, but I really feel yeah. like I'm this kind of person, Yeah, you know, and just worrying about external things instead of mm -hmm. realizing like what what makes your gut feel good? Mm -hmm. What actually, when you visualize what feels good in the life that you want, mm -hmm. is it what you're doing? Yeah. So, you know, and I've learned that in meditation too. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yes. If you think about this, is it making you feel anxious? Is it making your heart race? Is it making you short of breath? Yeah. But those aren't good feelings. Uh huh. But what do you, but then, you know, when they're, they're trying to, you know, through meditation, you're trying to calm yourself. Mm -hmm. They want you to take, they want you to take yourself to a place, you know, mm -hmm. in your mind that's calming. Yes. Happy. And what does that look like? Yes. So I think that can help kind of drive what direction is the right one. Well, what mm -hmm. feels good? Well, what mm -hmm. what do you visualize and that makes you happy? It, it mm -hmm. warms your heart or it calms your nervous system, mm -hmm. excites you. So go with those feelings. Trust your gut. I absolutely believe in that. Yeah. Trust your gut. I love it. Your voice. Um, be your biggest cheerleader. Um, and what you said about, I can totally relate to what you said about being a people pleaser, wanting to, you know, I, wanting to please your parents or wanting to please a friend, or like you said, everybody's doing this, maybe I should be doing it too. But it's really, like you said, taking time out to center yourself, trusting your voice and saying, I'm taking out all the noise, taking out all the noise and I'm yes. going to trust my voice. Yes. 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 I love that. Exactly. Yes. All that yes. noise. Yes. No, yeah yeah it's and it's so easy to chase the shiny oh my god anyway <laughs> but at the end of the day at the yeah. end of the day you know and it's good to have goals don't right. you know 
believe me, I like nice things. Yes. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, that stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, Colleen. You I could talk have... to you all day. I, I could talk know, to you all day. Know, right? So great. Like, you have a beautiful message. You have a, a, a skincare. When, when you talk about your brand, when you talk about your product, when you, you can see your passion filtering through that brand when you talk about them. And definitely your children, uh, your biggest accomplishment. You, I can feel the love that you have for them. And your father, who keeps being a role model and a mentor and an inspiration, uh, he sounds like an amazing human. Um, and so I am just so happy that you were able to share your story on your journey to purpose with our listeners. And you were able to come on today and share your story and be a testimony to somebody that's listening. So thank you so much for that. I loved talking with you. Call me anytime. Okay. We can like, get yeah. go deep like this anytime. Thank yes. you. So I was You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, well, insiders, that is our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to have Colleen's information in the show notes. So if you want to check out her skincare products, please, please, please go ahead and access the link that we will provide to you in the show notes. And of course, you know, we are on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, so make sure to check out Inside the Bubble HD and follow us. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, support the pod. Um, we are dropping episodes every Monday and um, we're looking forward to keep bringing you stories like Holly's, okay? So thank you so much. And you know what I always say, there's purpose in your story. I hope you enjoyed our show today. Hit the subscribe button and share. Share this pod with your family, with your friends, with your girlfriends. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Inside the Bubble with HG. Keep the conversation going. Drop us a heart emoji. Engage with us. We would love to hear from you. New episodes are dropping every Monday on your podcast streaming platforms. And remember, there's purpose in your story.